Domo News presents Serial Killers. Dude's Craigslist date is actually a wannabe serial killer. Ooh, exciting. One Linwood, Washington dude is lucky to be alive this week after his Craigslist date punctured his lung with a knife. The unidentified victim reportedly told cops he met the woman, identified as Amy Brown, through the listing site on Sunday. Things sure must have heated up on said date, because the two soon booked a room at a motel named the Rodeo Inn. Classy. Brown reportedly asked the guy if he was a serial killer several times, to which he replied, uh, no, no. She then mounted him and said, well, I am a serial killer, then penetrated him in the chest with a pocket knife. Brown's weight held the victim down. But despite his punctured lung, the man amazingly mustered enough strength to fight her off. He called the cops from the hotel and they arrested her in the parking lot. Brown later told the cops, I'm a loon, and said she wanted to eat the man's heart before going on a murder spree. Well, at least she's honest. Brazil serial killer confesses to murdering 39 people. Brazilian police have arrested a man who has confessed to the killings of 39 people. 26-year-old man Tiago Henrique Gomez de Rocha told police that he targeted young women, homeless people and homosexual men. He reportedly approached his alleged victims on a motorbike and then demanded valuables before killing them. However, he often left the scene without taking any of his victims' possessions. Rocha was arrested at his home on the outskirts of Goiania on Tuesday. A 38 caliber revolver and some stolen license plates were seized from his home. Russia tried to commit suicide in his prison cell on Thursday, but was stopped from doing so by a guard. Brazilian serial killer admits to killing 42 people in a decade. The 26-year-old Brazilian man has confessed to killing more than 40 people over the course of 10 years. Sayuson José das Graças was arrested on Wednesday after he stabbed 26-year-old Fatima Miranda at her home in Rio de Janeiro. During a police interview that was broadcast on Brazil's TV Globo, Das Graças said that in addition to Miranda, he had killed another 37 women, three men, and a two-year-old child. Das Graças said he would follow a victim for two to three months before attacking them. To avoid being caught by police, he would wear a cap and gloves and cut the nails off his victims if there was a struggle. Four of the killings were allegedly commissioned by a woman named Cluiza Balbina de Paula, who had been living with her ex-husband Jose Messiah and Dos Graças in the same house since earlier this year. Dos Graças was paid for the murders with food, money, and clothes. De Paula and her ex-husband have also been arrested. During the police interview, Dos Graças said he felt not, quote, the least bit of remorse, and said he would kill again if let out of prison. Unusually high death toll sparks speculation as serial killer. A recent look at the number of bodies which have been fished out of canals in Manchester, England, has led some to speculate that a serial killer may be on the loose. Greater Manchester police have fished 61 bodies out of the canals in just six years. That's at least 10 bodies a year, which seems an awful lot of accidental drownings. Professor Craig Jackson, head of psychology at Birmingham City University, said it is unlikely that all the bodies bobbed up as a result of accidents or suicides. According to the professor, canals are not popular suicide spots. They are, however, popular dumping sites, as water easily erases and washes away a killer's DNA. It sparked interest in Manchester and online with Twitter users using the hashtag, hashtag the pusher, to speculate on the possibility of an undiscovered serial killer roaming Manchester's streets at night. At least 22 of the bodies are unidentified, although police say that there is nothing suspicious about their deaths. The most high-profile case of a body being pulled from the canals is that of Chris Brainy, a 22-year-old bartender who went missing one evening. Although his body was recovered, his cause of death is unknown. Another mystery death was Canadian tourist Anthony Muse, who was pulled from the canals after having suffered a stab wound to the chest. The Greater Manchester Police dismissed the notion of a serial killer, but how do they explain the high number of deaths and bodies found in the canals? Indiana police may have caught a serial killer responsible for seven murders. Police in Gary, Indiana believe they have in custody the person responsible for killing a sex worker last Friday and that he may have murdered another six women over the past 20 years. He has been identified as 43-year-old Darren Dion Van, a resident of Gary, a city in the greater Chicago metro area. He is a known sex offender. Police investigated the death of 19-year-old prostitute Africa Hardy 
found strangled to death in this Motel 6 in neighbouring Hammond, Indiana, on October 17 after her friend, who had facilitated her meeting with Van, received a strange text message from his phone. Another man, Hardy's Pimp, gave police information enabling them to execute a search warrant on Van's home in Gary, where they arrested him. Under questioning, Van told investigators where the bodies of six other missing women could be found. His information has so far led police to the discovery of three bodies dumped in abandoned buildings. The city's coroner's office has ruled all seven cases as homicide. Sex worker shoots and kills suspected serial killer. A suspected serial killer who could be linked to the deaths of four prostitutes in the Las Vegas area some 10 years ago was shot and killed by a sex worker in West Virginia last week. The shooting took place after suspected serial killer Neil Falls showed up at an escort's apartment on July 18th after answering an ad she'd placed online. Falls reportedly pointed a gun at the woman and threatened to kill her after entering the home. Falls allegedly attempted to strangle the woman and the woman grabbed a rake to defend herself. When Falls put down his gun in an attempt to pry the rake from her hands, she picked up his gun and shot him. Falls died at the scene. Falls reportedly had a kill list which contained the names, ages, and numbers of 10 other women. A chilling trial straight out of a murder mystery TV show has ended with an Oregon jury finding 66-year-old Susan Monica guilty of serial murder. But it's how she chose to dispose of the bodies that is the most heinous. Monica was busted after trying to use one of her victim's welfare cards. Police then searched her 20-acre pig farm in southern Oregon and happened upon a grisly discovery, the half-eaten corpses of two men. Monica says she shot one of the men, Stephen DeLisano, in self-defense, and the other, Robert Haney, as a mercy killing following a farming accident. Both men worked on her farm. The forensics, however, paint a different picture. Most chillingly, she chose to feed the corpses of both men to her pigs. She was sentenced to a minimum 50 years in prison. Judge Tim Barnack followed up by saying, quote, You shot two people and fed them to your pigs. I don't know how else I can put it. You valued pigs more than you valued people. LAPD arrest man in connection with multi-day shooting spree. A four-day shooting spree has come to an end after police arrested 34-year-old Alexander Hernandez after an hour-long standoff at his Selmar home in San Fernando Valley, a northern Los Angeles suburb. Police have linked Hernandez to at least seven shootings. He claimed his first victim in the early morning hours of August 20th when 48-year-old Hildardo Morales, who was on his way to work, was gunned down in his pickup truck at a stoplight in Pacoima. On Saturday, police said Hernandez shot at three dogs in a Pacoima neighborhood, killing two of them. Hernandez allegedly struck again early Sunday morning. At around 5.50 a.m., the Franco family, who were on their way to church, noticed a gold SUV driving erratically behind them. When they pulled over, police say Hernandez opened fire, wounding the parents and killing their 23-year-old daughter, Mariana Franco, who, according to neighbors, was wheelchair-bound. Forty minutes later, police say Hernandez fatally shot a 29-year-old man in this Silmer Park. Twenty minutes later, Hernandez allegedly shot and killed 57-year-old Gloria Tovar as she sat in her car in front of this church. I talked with a few neighbors who declined to go on camera, but they described the scene here Sunday night. They said that police barricaded the neighborhood and closed it off where people couldn't get in or out and surrounded the house as they prepared to take Alexander Hernandez into custody. Neighbors also told police Hernandez had been acting oddly all week, sitting in his car and watching people, according to local media. Police have also connected Hernandez with two more shootings on Friday in West Hollywood and a shooting off the 5 freeway on August 20th that left one woman injured. Killer Filipino nurse tricks his way into UK, kills two people. A nurse has been convicted of murdering two elderly patients and poisoning several others at Stepping Hill Hospital in Stockport, Greater Manchester. Victorina Chua, who came to the UK from the Philippines in 2002, sabotaged prescription medications and medical charts for years. His most notable victims, Tracy Arden, 44, and Alfred Weaver, 83, were poisoned using saline drips contaminated by insulin. The insulin overdose plunged their blood sugar to dangerously low levels. Both died in July 2011. Chua also had many other victims who managed to escape his malign intent. 
For the first few years, Chua's poisoning spree went unnoticed. Hospital staff became confused with the subsequent hypoglycemic attacks. One day, a nurse discovered several saline bags that had been tampered with, prompting an investigation that led to the arrest of nurse Rebecca Layton, who was innocent. Chua had to change his game and waited five months before he resumed poisoning patients at the hospital. Nurses noticed the charts and medications were being altered and contacted the police. This time, Chua was arrested and Layton was exonerated. A written confession of sorts was found in Chua's house during a search. A particularly chilling sentence read, They thought I'm a nice person, but there is a devil in me. Chua did not show any emotion or remorse during the murder trial. Chua was found guilty of murdering two patients and poisoning 19 others with insulin. He poisoned a 22nd victim by changing her prescription charts so she was given the wrong drugs. Background checks conducted during Chua's trial revealed that his school records and other qualifications appear to have been falsified. Serial Killer Confesses when police arrested Todd Kolheb for kidnapping in November 2016, they soon discovered the South Carolina realtor had been living a double life as a serial killer. Months earlier, Kolheb hired Kayla Brown and her boyfriend Charlie Carver to do some cleaning work. But when the couple arrived, he shot Carver in the chest and kept Brown imprisoned inside an old shipping container. After her family and friends reported the two missing, the subsequent search eventually led authorities to Kolheb's farm. Brown was found chained like a dog and freed. She told rescuers of Carver's death and of several more bodies which her captors said were buried on the property. Investigators found Carver's corpse along with that of a couple who was similarly lured and shot to death. Colep soon confessed to the killings and even claimed to be responsible for the gruesome superbike murders which had remained unsolved for more than a decade. In 2003, Colep had gone to Superbike Motorsports pretending to buy a bike. His first victim was the mechanic, whom he shot twice in the back of the shop. He then shot the owner's mother in the chest and gunned down the owner and manager as they attempted to run out the door. For his crimes, Kolhep received seven consecutive life sentences. He managed to avoid the death penalty only by pleading guilty to all 14 charges against him. Phoenix Police hunting for serial killer after seven dead. Authorities in Phoenix are continuing an urgent manhunt to catch a man who has shot dead at least seven people. Between March 17th and June 12th, at least seven people were killed and two people were wounded by a serial shooter in Phoenix. The victims were all shot after dark. The shootings have been concentrated in the low-income neighborhood of Maryvale. Police said they have connected the shootings to one or multiple suspects who shoot their victims at night with a semi-automatic handgun. According to police, all of the witnesses have described their shooters as being outside of his car during each of the attacks. Officials have released a sketch of a suspect whom witnesses described as a light-skinned Latino or white man in his 20s. Authorities are offering a $30,000 reward to anyone with information on the case. Residents of a small Ohio town believe a serial killer may be in their midst. Residents of a small town in Ohio believe a serial killer may be on the loose following the disappearance and deaths of multiple women. Five women have gone missing in Chillicothe, Ohio, a town of 22,000 people. A series of disappearances began in May 2014 when Charlotte Trago, who had a history of heroin abuse, was reported missing by her mother. Tamika Lynch disappeared on the same day. Her body was found on a Paint Creek sandbar later that month. She had cocaine, amphetamines and alcohol inside her body. Six months later, in November 2014, Wanda Lemons, who also had a history of heroin abuse, disappeared. In December, authorities found Shasta Himmelrock's car abandoned with an empty tank and the doors left open. Her body was later found in a river with six parallel cuts on her left forearm, as well as oxycodone and cocaine in her system. Tiffany Sayer disappeared in May 2015, and her body was found a month later, wrapped in a sheet in a wooded area. She also had a history of heroin abuse. There are several factors linking the victims. Trego and Lynch knew each other, and all of the women had a history of drug use, with three having had an addiction to heroin. Family members believe that the women's history of drug use, as well as several of the women's history of prostitution, kept police from doing more to search for them earlier. Five bodies found in Alberta could be work of a serial killer. 
The recent discovery of a woman's body along with four other bodies near Leduca Berta has led the police to believe a serial killer might be responsible. The remains of a sex worker, Corey Ottenbright, was discovered in close proximity to four other bodies near Leduca Berta. Ottenbright, identified by DNA analysis, was last seen on May 9, 2004 after telling her husband and child she was going to work on the streets. Her remains were found on April 19, 2015 with another sex worker, Dolores Brower, who was last seen on May 15, 2004. Two other sex workers' remains were also found near the two bodies. Katie Ballantine was last seen on April 28, 2003, with her remains found July 7, 2003. Meanwhile, Amber Tucato was last seen on August 18, 2010, and her body was found on September 1, 2012. The burned remains of Edna Bernard were found on September 23, 2002, who was last seen on the previous day in an unknown vehicle. Police believe all five killings could be the work of a serial killer. The close proximity of the corpses and the fact that all the women deceased were sex workers are why the police believe a serial killer could be behind the murders. Four Victims of New Britain Serial Killer Found Behind Shopping Mall New evidence has been uncovered in the case of the mysterious New Britain Serial Killer, as the partial remains of four new victims have been found in the same secluded area as the bodies of three other women that were discovered back in 2007. Police have a suspect in custody but have yet to release the name or any other details. They believe there is no longer a threat to the public because the suspect was taken into custody earlier on unrelated charges. Authorities in the Hartford, Connecticut suburb have scoured the forested area behind the strip mall looking for clues and evidence to reveal the identity of a serial killer that they believe is responsible for the murder of at least seven women. Four of the seven victims have been identified using forensic evidence. The partial remains of Diane Cusack, Joy Valine Martinez, and Mary Jane Maynard were discovered by authorities in 2007. And of the four most recently discovered victims, only the body of Melanie Ruth Camelini has been positively identified. Since the Greater New Britain Serial Killer Task Force found the remains of the three women in 2007, they have searched the area every year in an effort to turn up new evidence in the case. If all of the victims were murdered by the same person, it would be the most prolific serial killer case in Connecticut since Michael Ross, also known as the Roadside Strangler, who was executed in 2005 for murdering four young women and admitting to four other homicides. Landlord suspected in five murders, large meat grinder also found. A Spanish landlord in Madrid has been arrested in connection with the disappearance of one of his tenants, Adriana Giosa, age 55. Adriana's brother, who lives in Argentina, contacted Spanish police after he was unable to contact his sister for several weeks. The landlord took over the house from his aunt after she has supposedly moved into a care facility. However, police have not been able to locate the elderly woman and have tentatively listed her among the five missing people. The other four missing people were also tenants renting rooms in the house when they disappeared. Two more may also have been women from Argentina. Police also discovered bloody knives and a large industrial-sized meat grinder. Neighbors said that they heard the landlord moving large trash bags out of the house during the night several days before Adriana was reported missing. The landlord has a record of schizophrenia and has spent time in a psychiatric hospital. Police are still attempting to locate the man's aunt and the other missing tenants.